I'm going to do tonight's post. I was going to do exercise, but I have been, I don't know how it's happened, but I've been really busy in lockdown. In fact, I need to talk to you about this. I was going to do a workout for you guys and I just had a mini like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't film anything this week. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, it's all too much. I just had like a total sort of freak out, like it's just too much. I'm overwhelmed. And you know, all I'm doing is being sort of a housewife and working. It's not like, it's not like it's not what millions of women do all the time, but I'm just completely overwhelmed by it and exhausted. Anyway, I've been working today. I'm just gonna kind of give you a rough timeline. It's 8 p.m. And um, I was gonna do like the mini workout for you guys now, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my menopause chat off my chest. Um, I'm working on a project at the moment and it is so good. And it's made me realize a lot of really big, major faux pas that I think and disservices that us women do to each other. And I would say that one of the biggest places and ways that we do each other a disservice is when it comes to the menopause. And I've always been a huge advocate of freedom of choice. But whatever choices us women make, it must be an informed choice and you should be able to get information very easily at your fingertips in particular when it comes to something when you think about right the population of um, this country is made up of 51 percent women and a hundred percent of those women will get the menopause a hundred percent of us and i would say a vast majority of those women don't know enough about it it's somehow seen as, oh, hot flush, oh, here we go, Ooh, you know, a bit loopy-loo, women kind of acting a bit weird, oh, look at her, she's a bit menopause. I mean, it's so, people are so derogatory about it. And yet all the women, the elder states women that I've spoken to, the really cool, sorted women who are in their late 50s, 60s, 70s, they all talk about it in a very different way. They talk about it as when you go through that change physically and you kiss goodbye to your baby making years, there is a certain type of liberation, uh, a certain kind of freedom where you start thinking, wow, okay, now it's time to think about what I want. What do I want from life? How do I see the next few years panning out? I've been talking a lot to this amazing doctor called Dr. Louise Newson. If you want to know about the menopause, just Google her. She's unbelievable. Women in Victorian times used to die after their menopause quite quickly. You know, they just had such a sort of low life expectancy. But now we live for 30, 40, 50 years after our menopause. So rather than it being an end of life thing, like in Victorian times where you'd have your menopause and die, so you didn't need to do anything about it, now, our menopause is our midlife. It is our midpoint. We have got so much more living to do. I want to uh, discuss what it is about us that makes us embarrassed in some way, feel less than, or feel like we are in some way cheapening ourselves by chasing youth and going on HRT. HRT comes in many different forms. It's up to you to find the best one for you. Not, it's not one size fits all. You've got to try a few before you find the right fit. The other thing I want to talk to you about is um, testosterone. Look into that as well. It's amazing. But I am telling you that the health benefits from taking HRT are big. Look into it and make an informed decision and tell your friends. The other thing about it, if you're one of those people that just feels that your symptoms aren't that bad and, you know, you should just be able to brave it out and be strong, don't do it. What is it with us that we, where we feel like we have to kind of, you know, be brave, be strong, come on, tough it out. You'll, you'll be fine. Just get through it. Head down, belt and buckles, belt and braces, I mean. <laughs> belt and buckles, that's bloody menopausal. 
I feel like I've been sort of wanging on. I'm in a really funny space today. I, I guess I've been angry all day because I've been filming this documentary and I'm, I'm fuming. I'm fuming. I feel, God, I don't know why I'm crying. I feel fuming and I feel sad and angry that women aren't getting something that could really, really help them or that they feel ashamed to pursue something that would really, really help them feel good, really good. And also I'm struggling and I feel embarrassed to struggle in lockdown and, uh, because a lot of people have got it so much worse than me, but it's, I'm just willing the days away. I'm willing my life away at the moment. I just want the kids to be able to go back to school and see their friends. That's all I want. I'm just willing the weeks away. And if anybody's got any good cooking ideas for food, please help me. My inner voice is telling me, apologize for being rubbish at YouTubing. YouTubing? Sounds like something you do at sort of a water park. Hi, do you want to go on YouTube? Yeah! I don't want to leave you now. I feel like I, I need to kind of impart some piece of wisdom. But I think probably what I should do is go to sleep. Mm -hmm.